Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to be continuing on with the Missing Framer documentation series. Now this is probably going to be the last one I do as the uh, previous one was met with lackluster reports basically on uh, people watching it. So this was more out of my own sanity to try and figure this stuff out because as mentioned in my previous episode, the documentation that Framer provide sucks. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is taking a look into the layout options that uh, Framer gives you with regards to your code component. And we're also going to be looking at the properties so that you're able to control certain things from outside of the component, inside of the component. Now, if you, haven't, if you don't know much about code components, I really suggest watching this first episode because I just sort of explain things and I think I think it's pretty much necessary uh, watching at this point. But saying that, let's dive into Framer, let's play around with the final few JavaScript options and wrap up this short but sweet code series on Framer code components. Framer, please sort your documentation out. Actually, on that note, I have noticed something else. So there is code examples, which I said there wasn't any code examples. You can just see here, there's just no code examples. There is, you've just got to make your window smaller and then they appear. Like, Framer, you're not doing a very good job at convincing us you guys are experts at web development here if this stupid little, uh, I found out what the problem is, it's a CSS property to say that if an attribute is present and display none, but I just don't understand it. Anyway, I digress. So, there's actually some dummy code for our first layout options. There's actually some dummy code given to us already inside the um, inside of the component. Let's actually go back here and make this smaller and show you, so that we're referencing something that um, so it's not all completely alien. So layout options basically is stating or auto sizing is stating how your component behaves or what the sizing options are based on your component. You can set sort of a wrapping element, how that wrapping element uh, behaves basically. And that will come clear as we work through it. But there are four settings that you can have. You can have auto, which is the default. You can have fixed, any, or any prefer fixed. And we're gonna run through these. Uh, I'm not well versed in clever ways to use these. Uh, I can only make assumptions at this point, but let's just go through them. So the first is um, auto. So let's, wh wh what we've got here is basically the comment here. These are decorated. You leave them as comments. You don't touch these as they are. Um, and auto is the default. If you wanted to, you could potentially just remove these comments here uh, and it will read that, but let's just leave that as it is. So auto is, as I say, the default. It's just gonna, the, the wrapping element that wraps your component is just going to be the size of your component. But what we can do is actually change these to fixed, which on the front end, if we open up our page, will give us this bounding box that we can change, basically, or change whatever size. Now, this is interesting because, again, the only assumption I can make at this point is that if you set it as fixed, that gives you a style property that is only, only there when a, uh, a component is in this way. So what I mean by that is, and we have to do some clever stuff here because um, frame is a bit weird anyway, is I'm gonna take my card style and combine it with, this is what this is doing, props.style. Now let me just console log what props.style is. And if we go back into our pages here and we play that, if I inspect, so in these we've got style a style attribute that's only present, according to the documentation anyway, according to the documentation, it's only apparent when we have fixed styling. The What you can do with that then is, and I don't know why you wouldn't, you couldn't just put width and height 100%, but you can see it's width and height 100%. I've merged these two together. So I'm taking the style that's here, the background color red and the color that's white, merging it with width and height, and then I will just put that in there. 
and you can see that that box now has just expanded the entire width. And if we go to our page here and um, see that, you can see now that this component is going to change the shape and size based on the wrapping element. So again, I'm, I'm not a genius. I, I, I'm not necessarily sure of different ways to use that, but just know that we can obviously do that with the um, when things are fixed. But uh, we don't have to do that, of course. We can just remove that. In fact, let's just revert all of that stuff. And you don't even have to respond to it whatsoever, but I guess there is a benefit to um, making it fixed other than just moving other components around. You can see this text element here is kind of if pushing it around or whatever. So outside of affecting other elements, you can then affect the, the, the element on the inside. So there's that. You can also make it fixed width. So we could have, and these are pixels, you could have a width of um, 500 or, and you can have a height of 100 if we save that. We can still change it, but it's the, it's the uh, height that it gets inserted at. So there's, that's another option that we can have. And in true Framer documentation style, it doesn't tell you that you need Framer supported layout width as fixed to be able to set the intrinsic height. What other stuff have we got? We've got any. So if we pop any in here and we drag a new component in here, then we can, we can change it to whatever we want. Whereas in Uh, fixed drag that in then we can't do actually we might be able to do auto yeah we can't do automatic it's uh, yeah fit content so you're just sort of changing the options that you have available from that wrapping wrapping element let's get rid of some of these and then any prefer fixed is obviously, let's actually put that in. So there we go, we can actually change it to auto if we need to. So just lots of options basically on that one. So the next thing we're gonna look at is actually the uh, property controls here. So we'll, let's take that. And again, this is giving the user the ability to manipulate some of the values or some of the settings of the component itself and then it's the developer's choice of what they want to give access to and what the interface looks like uh, giving access to those things so let's just run through them all and uh, get something working so if we add property controls here on our it's just a function let's just do the demo one here it's just a function that runs where we pass in the component, so that will be card component, and we're allowing them to insert some text. So, go back into our pages here, click on our thing, and we've got a bit of text here that we can add to whatever we want, okay? We're not doing anything with that string text at the moment, but let's say, for example, then, we want to allow for the title, so, and then this will be this will be passed through as a prop. So if we go props.text or props.title, this is basically saying if text is, uh, exists, then use that. Otherwise, props.title, which we set the default one, is very confusing, but just know that props.text is what, what text is basically what matches up here that it gets passed through. So once again, if we do this, and I think it's saved, you can see that that, if I delete that, enter, Sam, you know, you can give, give um, access to some of this stuff. Look at, you can hide them here. So basically if, this is basically saying, if toggle is visible, so you can create a basic interface here. Let's just actually add this in and we can just walk through it then. Save that. But this is basically saying if toggle is set to false, then hide the text string. So if we come back in here, click on this, 
see how that's showing and hiding the text there, which is really quite handy. You obviously you you could use the value of toggle. You could you you could I I don't know. I mean, you know, you could say if um, props uh, let's go hidden equals props dot uh, props dot toggle. You can see it's hidden. So you can use those values, but you can also use these values to affect other values, which is quite cool. Don't know the wrong way around there, but you get the point. So that's quite cool. Um, and you can add descriptions as well. So to, again, to help the designer to, I don't know, give them hints of what you can actually put them in. There's a description field. So uh, quite simple that. Save that. There's a label there then just to help help the designer with what your what your thing does. So it, now it's just a case of going through, we've got arrays, we've got booleans as well, which I guess is the same as the toggle, but nonetheless, you can select a color. So what if your if your component needs to be a different color or you want the designer to be able to change the color on something? Um, it can be instances of other components, which is quite that's quite cool. Uh, date as well. Enum, which is like a selection. It can, for instance, this one can only be A, B, or C. Uh, and I guess there will be a drop down of sorts to be do A, B, and A, B, and C. So I think that'll do it. That's pretty much a quick run through of all the options you can use in a in a code component. I would like to do in the next what one an exploration of frame and motion and how to kind of get that working a little bit. Uh, again, if this picks up a bit of steam, then I might consider it. But for now, I'm happy with just the kind of basics, getting a component up and running in this short series and, and helping you just understand basically from the, from the lackluster documentation that Framer has offered. So again, like, subscribe, all the rest of it. Until next time, happy no coding. <laughs>